Hello everybody and welcome to part 9 of our NLTK with Python tutorial video series. In this video series, or in this video rather, uh, I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit more about the corpora, how you can view the corpora yourself and all that. So you can view the corpora individually online and download individual parts of it online. But the problem is it's not really very well navigatable. Um, whereas on your computer if you downloaded all the corpora like I told you to, uh, that's a lot easier to navigate. You can double click on the stuff and actually view what's within that file because uh, a lot of this stuff doesn't really, it's just really shorthand file names and until you open up the file and look into it, you don't really actually know how that file is even structured and if you even care to, you know, test it out. So anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about is, is the corpora, accessing the corpora, and also just finding it uh, or corpus. So uh, the first thing is we want to find the corpus. So the way that we're going to do that is if you're on, um, well, whatever machine you're on, get to the directory where NLTK the module is installed. So on Windows, that's going to be C, uh, Python 34, lib, site packages, and NLTK. Then what you're going to look for is the data. Now, if you're on Mac or Linux, I don't know about Mac. Uh, it's usually like user lib python or something like that on Linux. I'm not sure about Mac, but you can look it up. Um, anyway, you want to just know where your packages are. If you're at this tutorial and you don't know where packages are, um, the best thing I can tell you is to Google where is Python, where are Python modules stored. The other thing you can do, actually, um, I'll just show you really quick, actually. If you want to find out where something is, you can go import NLTK. And then we can just print NLTK dot underscore underscore file underscore underscore. Save and run that, and this should work. Yes. Okay, so if you're looking to find out where the location of something is, you can just do this. So this is where the location of NLTK's in init.py file is, but basically where's the Python stuff? It's right in here. So there you go, Mac users. Anyway, you're going to want to find yourself NLTK and then the data. Right click, edit with idle, and scroll down a little bit, and this is what you're looking for, right here. So if you're on Windows, NLTK data might be in C, uh, NLTK data, it might be in your D, E, uh, and so on, or at the very end here, it's thrown into app data, which is going to be the case for most of you viewers on Windows. It's going to be in app data, and I'll show you how to get there in a moment. For other people, it's going to be in a more legitimate location user share NLTK data is usually the first one but it can be in any of these so check it and keep looking until you find it uh, so once you find it you'll want to just open it up so like I said Windows users you'll go like this per percent app data percent hit enter and then I'll take you into app data roaming now you'll want to head down to NLTK data right here double click on that and there you have your NLTK data. Now your corpora is going to be right in here. So we'll double click that. And here's all the corpora that we have. And let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit, make them nice and big so we can actually see them. And here we have just a ton of corpora to use. Uh, these are zipped up versions. So actually the corpora is basically these. And these are all zipped. Uh, but for example, WordNet's very po powerful. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Senti WordNet, we'll also hit on that. But let, let's say like Shakespeare, okay? So here's some Shakespeare stuff. These are XML documents. You'll need Notepad++ most likely. Um, so this is, it's like a play, right? So here you go. You've got like all this stuff, speech, speaker, line, line, line. So you can see the structure of this is very different than say the structure of, um, let's go back one. Let's check out NPC chat. Edit. So here's some some chat. What's not to like about 10 to 19 adults use? <laughs> I don't know. Not safe for work chat or something. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, how are? Okay, yeah. Okay. What? What? <laughs> wow. What? This is an interesting chat. I don't know. Um, we'll get away from this chat for now. Okay. Um, all right. 
fancy that. Next, uh, what else did I want to show you? I don't know. We could show uh, brown. There's some stuff in here. Oh, the other thing I want to show you, we'll end up using it actually. We'll test with it, is uh, movie reviews. So a lot of people want to have something that's positive and negative for sentiment to test against. They don't know what to do. Uh, as soon as I can find it, here it is, movie reviews. Now we've got a positive and negative movie reviews. There's a thousand of each. Uh, so we'll be using that in a little bit. Anyway, it would behoove you to go ahead and take a peek into the Corpora and see all of the stuff that's available because it's a huge list. It's a bunch of data sets and it's some pretty good data, uh, some pretty highly valuable data, I'd say. Now, uh, we've already kind of covered it in the past, uh, but generally, to access that data in some fashion, what you're going to do is just do from nltk.corpus, uh, you're going to import the specific corpus. So let's say we want Gutenberg uh, for the Gutenberg Bible. Um, actually, it's not just the Gutenberg Bible. I'm mistaken when I said that. It's uh, quite a few things, actually. Uh, but anyway, let's say we want the Guten Gutenberg, and we'll import, we'll get the Bible. Uh, so we're going to say our sample text is equal to Gutenberg, uh, and we want the dot raw version of uh, you know Bible KJV kjv.txt, okay, and then um, we can just print, well, that's going to be a huge mistake to print the sample. Um, let's, let's tokenize it uh, first, and then we'll print some stuff. Okay, so uh, from nltk.tokenize, import sent tokenize, and then we'll just do toke equals sent tokenize uh, sample, and then print Toke 5 to 15. Okay, so we can access it this way, uh, just like we accessed uh, like the State of the Union and all that kind of stuff. So, um, anyway, there's that. And so basically, you can use this kind of methodology for a lot of the corpus, uh, or the corpora rather, uh, but not necessarily all of them are going to work that way. So, um, like, uh, let's see. Well, they can't. They will work that way. Actually, I, I misspoke again. Uh, they can work that way, but the problem is, like, for example, SentiWordNet. Let's open up this one. You could open up the raw version of SentiWordNet, but the problem with that is uh, this is clearly a, I mean, it's a .txt, but it's clearly more of a CSV, something you would treat as a table rather than anything else. So you're going to want to handle that. Luckily, NLTK, we're going to be talking about SentiWordNet here anyways. Uh, but NLTK is going to kind of have a built-in handler for this. Otherwise, you would load this probably into Pandas or something like that uh, to modify the data set. But anyway, uh, most of it is raw text. So you're going to use the raw method like I was showing you guys uh, here with the Bible. So for example, let's actually pull this back up. Let's go to the Gutenberg. So NLTK data. Corpora, and then we go Gutenberg. Where are you, Gutenberg? There we are. And then so you've got all this stuff that Gutenberg has. You've got Moby Dick. You've got some Shakespeare stuff and all that. And obviously we pulled in the Bible just because that's the first thing I think of when I hear Gutenberg. It's probably the first thing most people think of. Anyway, that's it for the corpus. Uh, I, did, I just want to show you guys uh, how you can actually navigate yourself there. I mean, they're there. You can actually look at them yourself. You can take the text files. You can use them in other things. You don't have to be using NLTK to use them. So that's kind of what's kind of cool about it is you can literally open up. Oh, this was a mistake in Notepad++. Or Notepad, rather. You should open them in Notepad++. But anyway, uh, like this, you know, like, look at this. My goodness, it's so much text. And... Like the Senta word or the uh, Senta WordNet is extremely useful. Same thing with like the movie reviews and stuff. So, really cool stuff. This is actually a big, uh, big data set that I think a lot of people probably just kind of gloss over and don't really pay attention to. But there's a lot of good stuff in there. So, anyways, uh, that's that with this tutorial. I just wanted to cover real quick the corpus because I don't want to like not cover it because now we're going to kind of move into more of a project with NLTK so didn't want to just leave corpus behind as far as how you can manually go in there and look at stuff and then also get the raw stuff but anyway that's that if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below otherwise as always thanks for watching thanks for all the support and subscriptions and until next time